Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started and respect the fact that all of you are on time. And we want to make sure that we leave enough time for questions too. So it's really, let's get our speakers up here and let's get going. Uh, I'm Lisa Soroka and I am the moderator for this evening. Really excited that we are offering this program tonight. Um, it's a topic that's a little bit more specialized than a lot of the topics we deal with, but it's a critical issue um, in terms of when you're dealing with all of healthcare. Kids are not little adults, is what we always like to say in pediatric healthcare. Treating them is not necessarily the same. Taking care of them is not exactly the same. The issues that you're dealing with, I mean, there are so many issues that are very specific to pediatric health care, and so we wanted to spend the time talking about it uh, this evening and letting all of you know those. Uh, we have a wonderful panel of speakers, and I, what I think I'll do is introduce each speaker um, as before the speaker's going to come up, and that way we know exactly who's who. Uh, but what we'd first like to do, obviously, is thank our sponsors. It's really critical uh, to have sponsorship for this ongoing forum series, which has now been, I want to say, it, is it 13, 14 years? I mean, it's a long time that it's been you know, going. And we've been able to su sustain it, but so much of it is because of the sponsors that we have that continually support it. So this evening, why did we select pediatric health care? And really, the reason that the committee wanted to have pediatrics represented is because we really want to point out the fact that pediatrics is not the same as treating small adults. As I said earlier, there are issues specific to pediatric care, financing issues, access issues, quality of care issues, and also the transition from very high quality, <coughs> effective pediatric care and then transitioning into the adult era, it's preparing the kids, our future generations, um, to have long, healthy lives. And there are so many issues related to access for kids and, and um, in terms of where kids fall socioeconomically and um, where they fit into that whole system that in, in, in particular is going to talk about some of that those issues related around that. And um, Paul, I know you're going to address financing uh, in our talk, you know, related to that. And Michael's going to, Michael's our physician on the panel, um, is going to talk a lot about quality of health care um, for kids. So let me just start you off with just some simple facts um, about kids. Kids are approximately a third of the population. So in general, you know, in some cases they can be more, but in others less. Um, a quarter of all patients nationwide are pediatric. And just to define pediatric, pediatric is technically defined, you know, 18 years and below. But when you're looking at taking care of children and adolescents, really you're also talking about moving into adulthood. And, and so particularly the children's hospitals in many cases, uh, the kids are treated up until age 21, 22, even though they're technically not a child anymore, the issues that they're facing as they're transitioning into adulthood are significant enough that they should still stay in the care of a pediatric specialist. And so they help them transition you know, into that period. Into that period. Um, of all the national health expenditures, which in 2014 equaled uh, $3 trillion for healthcare, um, ex expenditures, 13% of them are for kids. And while you may say, well, that's 13%, and, and frankly, we always hear about in the older population and as the baby boomers are aging and, you know, the size of the population and the expenses related to the population, um, that they're the biggest area of, of cost. But when you have a sick child, many times, even though there are less sick, sick kids, there are. There are more healthy kids than there are sick kids. The cost can really escalate very quickly for a very sick child. And the care that's needed many times has to be so specialized uh, for that child, you know, driving the child into the center of excellence, driving the child towards uh, the very specialized and very capable children's hospitals. And so, and as a parent, when you're dealing with that, there's so many issues related to that, that it really is imperative to recognize 
pediatric care is really critical. And even though the expenditures related to other areas of um, expenditure and other age groups aren't as great, let's still spend some time talking about it. You know, it's really important. And then um, in terms of 2014 statistics, again, again, out of, uh, out of CMS, $475 billion was spent on Medicaid expenditures nationwide. And actually what's interesting is in California, it's spending per child, and this is a 2009 figure that I was able to find, was actually the lowest in the nation, which is kind of surprising given the size of California and how many children there are in California. And what it tells you, and Paul, I know in particular, you're going to talk a little bit about this, um, the expenditure of um, dollars on Medi-Cal Medi in California, Medicaid and all the other states, when it's the lowest in the nation, what is that telling you in terms of reimbursement to the providers, in terms of reimbursement to all the hospitals, in terms of reimbursement to all the practitioners and all the providers? And so I just want to throw that seed out and talk about that. Um, in terms of specialists, and, and my background in this is I worked for the specialists at Children's Hospital for over 10 years. And a pediatric specialist is not the same as an adult specialist. And I'm going to tell you I'm a little biased. But in terms of all the specialties, they're all replicated in pediatrics. So, you know, at Children's, there are 33 different specialties. There's about 20 medical specialties, about 10 or more at this point, um, surgical subspecialties. And these physicians are trained in excess of um, an adult specialist because they go through the regular training and then they go on to do a pediatric subspecialty residency. And so really the point that I'm trying to make is if what you're looking at is where are you going to have a child seen, then really my whole bias is you get right to the pediatric specialist and you figure out what's going on very quickly and you get the appropriate care very early on so that these kids are taken well, well care of. And I know our speakers are going to address some of that. Um, let's see. In terms of the numbers of children's hospitals in uh, the U.S., there's roughly 200. Why I say roughly is because there are freestanding children's hospitals like CHLA here in um, Los Angeles, and there are programs within hospitals, some of which are standing programs, in the hospital, and then there are pediatric programs that aren't even to that level. So just, I'll throw out there about 200. Okay, where are we gonna talk about tonight? Tonight we're gonna talk about really four key areas. We're gonna talk about the financing of healthcare for pediatrics. Uh, we're gonna talk about including in that payer sources, you know, for it, special programs for children, you know, let you get a little familiar with that. Uh, but also we really want to talk about how the financing landscape is changing at this point. As we move into implement, more implementation of the ACA, pediatrics is caught up in it as much as adult, even though, again, the emphasis for the most part is on the adult population, but it's all changing within pediatrics also in pediatric specialty medicine. And this is critical to know because there are a lot of programs for kids that at this point protect the very, very ill children really from uh, some of the programs that might not serve them as well. And a lot of change is happening. So we have to really you know, keep up with that. How about access to care? How do these kids get to these incredible providers? I mean, it's an interesting difference in how some of them get there. And many of these children who are taken care of, which I know, Ann, you're going to address, um, are in disadvantaged socioeconomic statuses. They have, you know, they may be in a low-income family. They may have real behavioral challenges. They have socioeconomic, you know, difficulties around maybe mom or dad isn't working. Maybe they live in a really bad neighborhood. Maybe they can't get to the specialist. You know, a lot of issues like that. And so we're going to spend some time talking about that. Quality of care issues for kids. Really what we're going to talk about, and I know, Michael, you're going to spend some time on this. There are some really neat, unique programs that are out there that really can help um, the care, in particular of very, very ill and fragile kids. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And then one of the last issues is how do you transition from pediatric care into adult care? It's a big issue 
for kids who are coming, you know, like I said, in their 18, you know, 18, you know, into their early 20s. Big, big issue because they're doing a lot of change themselves anyways at that point. And on top of it, medical issues, you know, make that very difficult. So I'd like to introduce the speakers. We chose the speakers because they have expertise in um, different areas, which is wonderful. It's a wonderfully balanced panel um, for tonight. Our first speaker is, and you have this in front of you, so I don't want to just read it off to you, um, basically, but Anne came down from Sacramento. Anne Kunz came down. She's the president and CEO of the California Children's Hospital Association, of which there are eight California um, children's hospitals that she represents. And really what CCHA uh, wants to do, as it says in, in your uh, materials, promote well-being, really promote access to high quality pediatric care, which is again, as I've mentioned, a bias of mine, and long-term, uh, helping to ensure long-term stability of freestanding children's hospitals too. Previous to this, Anne has significant government experience that you can talk about and was very involved in um, the move from fee-for-service Medi-Cal into managed Medi-Cal uh, when she was working with the state. And so Anne's seen both sides of it, I, I think I'd say, because you know that was a huge change to move from fee-for-service into managed Medi-Cal. So I'd like to invite Anne up to speak.